Hi, my name is Becky Socks for Mom, and I am coming to you today in the middle of September, which is my favorite month because it's all about samplers for me in September. Um, sampler September and Sampler Sore have started. They started at the beginning of the month and they happen every year. I think this may be the fifth year of it. I'm not sure if it's been going on that long, but I love samplers. Um, I've loved samplers since I was in college in the late 70s, and I lived in Virginia, and of course there's a lot of historical things around there, and I saw um, authentic uh, samplers and just was fascinated by the story behind these little girls stitching these samplers. And um, so I'm excited about this month. So if this is the first time that you have hopped onto my channel, um, I call it floss tube because it's mostly about cross stitching, which there's been a huge resurgence of in recent years. I talk some about knitting and some about quilting, but it's predominantly cross stitch because that's my passion right now. So welcome, I hope you see something that will inspire you. My glasses aren't going to be too distracting for you. I do see a reflection on them, so I may end up taking them off. I'm actually in my kitchen today with the very first dining cabinet we ever had. Um, it's been in my fiber room the last 10 years, but we have downsized, so we no longer, we got rid of our uh, dining room furniture and this is now my dining room cabinet um, 38 years later so I picked this spot because it seems to have the least glare in the house and I've got some samplers back from total framing that I'm excited to show you this is the first time I have used museum glass I thought I'd give it a try um, and it will probably be the last time. I like to frame my things without any glass on them because I don't like glare, and um, this has some, but Total Framing did a beautiful job. Let me position this so there's no glare on it. This is Anna Grader, and she, this is her work. She's actually, I think she's um, an invention. I mean, I don't, she's not a reproduction sampler. So not an invention. You know what I mean. So here she is, it's by the Scarlet House, 1812. And I will try to zoom in and give you a little closer look at some of the stitches. The alphabet has a combination of eyelet stitches and Smyrna crosses, and I just love the strawberries. So I'm happy to have her finished. And she will hang, I'm gonna put some pictures in of where she hangs. She's on a wall that has other red samplers or just predominantly red, red type, um, red thread. <laughs> My, these samplers are more red, I guess. I, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so there's Anna Grader by the Scarlet House. And oh yes, let me, if you can look at the frame, can you see that frame? You see that there's some red in that? I just thought that was so cool because it brings out the red in the sampler. So there you go, with the reflection 
of my backyard. That is Anna Grader. And the other one I got back is Jane Stanwick's sampler, 1843. And I believe this is an authentic reproduction. I forgot who it's by, but I really love this sampler too. I love the Big Red House. I bought this, um, wait just a minute, Kenzie. She's ringing the bell. She wants to go out in the backyard and do some sunbathing. Um, I got this at the Country Sampler. Is that what it's called? Um, it was a kit and it's on 32 count. So they had said, the designer had said to stitch one over one, but with 32 count, I just went with two. So there she is. And this is a really cool frame too. So, two new samplers arriving just in time for sampler soiree. out there sunbathing. Kenzie, my little Westie, I can watch her. I'll see how long she can sunbathe in this Texas heat. Although there are leaves falling off the trees in the heat. Go figure. I'm not used to that anyways. So I started out the month with Jane Fittis, a Hands Across the Sea sampler which was a stitch along, I believe, in a group on Facebook a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. But it was about the time that I was um, pretty doped up on medications because of my uh, neck. And I ended up having a three level fusion. So I didn't keep up, but I did pull her out I believe I am actually using her on um, Weeks Dye Works straw. And I'm using the Avera Soie silks, which I can't really show you. But there they are. And I did make a um, gloss keep for her right there of the blue house. She has a crown on the back because I, I'm actually, no, she does not have a crown. She has a Celtic uh, symbol on the back because she's Scottish. Charm is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here she is. I left my whiteboard in the other room, so let's see if this works. Okay, so I do have the border all the way around, and I just kind of concentrated up here on the top. I got one of those rows of alphabet complete, I believe the second row. I started on these letters, and of course the Scottish letters have all the I mean, the Scottish samplers have a lot of curly cues around their letters. I just barely got a start on that. And then the three days were up. I gave her three days. There she is. She's a pretty girl. That blue house I love. Okay, so let's see what I moved on to next. 
in my book of days, my book. Next, I moved on to Agnes Lyle. Now, I had posted a picture on Instagram because I bought this. Um, absolutely fell in love with the white house on the front. Sorry, I picked up the wrong one. Oh no. Hold please, I need to go get it. This is Agnes Smile, 1832. This is a reproduction by Michelle of while Cyrus Knapp's designs. And I just really love the things that um, she is turning out right now. Um, when I saw this, I knew I needed it, especially since it's a Scottish sampler. But the White House is incredible. And so I had posted a picture, a photo of this up on Instagram when I got it, and I asked everyone, should I abandon my rotation and have a Scottish sampler month? And it was a resounding yes. And Michelle posted on there, how can you resist that White House? And man, that's all I needed. <laughs> I was sunk. So I started her on, let's see, let me look at my card. Um, I started her on 36 count vintage pearl barley by Lakeside Linens. Um, September 4th is when I started her to add to my Scottish sampler wall. And this is sampler sore because it's a reproduction. So there's the White House. Now I have to tell you, um, Last weekend, in the at the tail end of, um, well, on the 10th and the 11th, I went up to Kansas, to Independence, Missouri, I guess, to uh, the Quilters, Quilters Station Extravaganza. And I had posted that my intention was to finish this white house that whole time. And so this is the only thing I brought. And a friend of mine posted that, uh, so you think you're gonna be stitching there, huh? And I found out she was right. <laughs> I did a lot of visiting. I met a lot of um, faces behind Instagram names. And of course I worked on the projects the designers brought, but I did get to stitch on this a little bit at night and I did not finish the White House. But I must tell you that um, the, the red, one of the reds that's called for is Louisiana hot sauce. And I didn't have any of that. So I subbed, mm, I don't know what it was I subbed, but I thought it resembled the DMC. But then when I saw Christine, she picked me up at the airport and I told her it was supposed to be Louisiana hot sauce. She said, oh, that doesn't even come close. And my friend Pat and Teresa said the same thing. So um, Christine's son brought some things to the retreat and he brought me some Louisiana hot sauce. So if you see over here, um, this is the Louisiana hot sauce and that's whatever I had that I just wanted to go ahead and rip out and do the red thing. I mean, put the, put the Louisiana hot sauce in. And my little Westie just told me she's done some dating, so I guess she made it about eight minutes. Hold on, I'm not even gonna stop this. So, let's see here. Here's the Louisiana hot sauce. It's pretty. 
So I love this. I will continue to work on it. It's going to go into my rotation, I believe, next month. I think there's a spot coming open soon, and it will be there permanently until she's done, and she will probably be my first sampler finished for my Scottish sampler wall. Although, as you will see, I have several started. Okay, so after Agnes Lyle, Um, it was dark 13 and that is on the 13th of the month. You stitch on something spooky or macaw or, um, Halloweeny or whatever. And I had just bought this. Try to get, that's a photograph on there. This is an out of print pattern, unfortunately, by Ann Brown, the good huswife. Oh, how I wish she would open up her Etsy shop and give us these PDFs. I'm sure she would make a bunch of money if she did, because we all want them. So I just fell in love with this one. What's it called? Pumpkins and Peacocks. And I like it on the black, but I didn't have any black. So I actually started it on 32 count Weeks Gunmetal. I wanted to do 32 count with two strands because she did have um, DMCs listed, which is something I do like about her patterns. I think a lot of them were become way before overdies. So I had these cute little um, thread cards because I'm participating in the great thread key, thread floss card trade. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But this gunmetal is actually darker than it's showing up here. It's showing up a little purpley, but it's actually pretty dark. Um, let me see if I can put it behind something white if that will. No, not re really. It is darker. I'm going to try it on this. I may end up um, switching it out to black because I do like how it looks on the black. So that's really cute. I like it. And I love these cards. Um, I'm getting so many in, I'm losing track of who gave me what, but I thought they would be perfect for this. So that was my meager little start on the 13th. I basically did a lot of uh, looking for DMC on that day. Okay, and up next is Ann Morrison. Oh, she's not back there eat too. No, here she is. Um, Ann Morrison is a stitch along that traditional stitches in Canada started for their 20th anniversary. Nicola uh, gave them this pattern exclusively, I believe, and Ruth Heck came up with a, uh, divided it all up here for us. But if you've watched any of my floss tubes, um, you will know that I am way behind because I started it on 46 count and although I really love the teensiness of it, I just felt like it was going too slow. So I switched to 40 count and I know this is a seraphim, but I'm not sure what it is. And so I've done most of that up there. Um, when they switched to the curly cues, I switched to the curly cues. 
those letters right there. Let me put the board behind it. And uh, that didn't get me caught up. When they switched to the eyelets, I switched to the eyelets. That didn't get me caught up. And then they're way down here, but I believe they've done all the way across now. So I do want this finished by the end of the year. Uh, so I'll just keep working on her maybe a little bit every night. Maybe three threads a day probably would get me caught up. If I did three threads a day, maybe that's what I'll do. So there is Ann Morrison. Now something that's interesting about the story of Ann that uh, Nicola writes about in the book, which isn't in here, is that when she was doing the genealogy of Anne, she discovered that Anne has a um, newish, more current, um, I don't wanna say um, current because I do believe he passed away, I could be wrong, but it's Jim Morrison of The Doors that band is in her family line, which was kind of cool. Now, when they uh, came over to the United States or the colonies, I don't know when they came over here, uh, they added an R to their name. So it's spelled with two R's. So uh, that is Jane. I don't have her floss with her. I must have left half of it back in my study, but I am doing her with a Verisois silks, and I have a cute little Jane Fittis thread key of the Blue House, of course. So that gets me all caught up this month. Um, I'm halfway through the month, and I have other Scottish samplers that I will be sharing with you at the end of the month. I have a couple of them are new starts even. So stay tuned for the end of the month to see my wrap up on Sampler Soiree or Sampler September. Next up um, is a giveaway and I will be right back with those items. Last month, I finished Elizabeth Easton, and she is the first um, sampler that will go on my colonial wall. She's actually being framed in Denver, or she's done being framed in Denver. I left her there when I was there a few weeks ago, and I'm going back tomorrow. So I'll pick her up this week and hang her on my colonial wall. Well, I wanted another colonial picture to fill her empty spot on my rotation. So I showed you my binder with all the colonial patterns I've been collecting of colonial, um, I guess it's mostly the colonial people that are on them, the way they dress. And so I asked you all to help me and to show me which colonial person that you thought I should stitch next. And the winner was going to get my Elizabeth Easton thread key that I used on that sampler. And a lot of you weighed in, over a hundred of you weighed in. And let me tell you, it was a close race. A lot, a lot of people even said, I can't even answer this because um, I love all of them. But several of you gave me selections and told me why you thought I should do that one, which was really cool to read all those. And the winner and the winner up were neck and neck. And I will tell you the winner now. The winner of my poll was Carriage House Samplings, Faith, Hope, and Honor. Um, you guys really like this one, 
and I do too. It's that red dress. Um, this is just really cool. This one down here is done on silk gauze, I believe. And this one's done on linen. Well, I opted for the linen and I also opted for the DMC. And I pulled the DMC first and loved it. So I thought I'm going with this. I think Kathy used the NPI silks, which I do have a lot of those. Well, I was excited because on the pattern, um, on the pattern, she had a photo or a picture of a woman and Kathy's been super generous with me, with my thread keeps, um, giving me her blessing for them of using her images. And I did this one. Wait, let me, what did I do with my board? I guess I took my board back. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the fabric I found when I was at Quilter Station to make a bag because how awesome does this look? I think that's pretty much perfect for this sampler. So I found that and then I went ahead and made a thread keep of this girl right here. I hope you can see her. I'm going to insert photos of her if you can't see her very well. But it looks like Kathy used this image as her inspiration because they're, whoop, you can't, well, you really can't see it if I have it over here. Sorry about that. There you go. Because she looks just like that girl. Now I also glued up some rectangles, which I like a little bit better because you can see the full dress. And I'm just waiting on my um, mini rectangular trays for this. So she will be in my shop whenever I open again. And so I'm all set to go. I I pulled the DMC threads and just look at these colors are so wonderful. I'm in the process of putting them on these super cool um, floss cards that I got in a trade. Aren't those fun? And I have to confess, when I pulled this name, when I when I tallied up the tolls, I just had to start. So let's see here. I think it goes like this. It's actually longer than I thought it was gonna be. I'm using vintage pearl har bar barley, vintage pearl barley, and I started on the dress which is actually more of a corally color. Um, but, oh, it's gonna be pretty. And then I put her away and I will wait till next month when she goes into that Elizabeth Easton spot and then I'll get to work on her once a month for five days, I believe. I think that's the spot that she, she got. Okay, are you ready for the winner? I did the random draw. I mean, the comment picker, the YouTube comment picker. And the winner is Sandra Ware. Sandra Ware, her comment was, Summer at Cherry Hill is a pretty colonial. I like that one too, Sandra. I like all of these and I wanna stitch all of these. So um, Summer at Cherry Hill will be stitched at some point. But Sandra, you are the winner of the um, Sparrow Thread Keep. It has a little 
tree charm on the back. If you will email me, I'll put my email address in the drop, drop box below and tell me you're the winner. And I will get this sent out to you. Okay, so I'm gonna have another giveaway next month. And let's see. I am going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to give away the Faith, Hope, Love Lady. And I will show you both of these. I'll have both of those in the shop probably. I'm not sure. And I haven't decided what charm I'm going to put on the back, but I will, I'll pick one. And so... If you are interested in winning one of these thread keeps, why don't you tell me um, what, let's see. Uh, this is always hard. I really like it when I'm wanting you guys to help me with a decision, but I don't have a decision right now to be made. So why don't you tell me if you participated in Sampler Sorry or Sampler September, and if you did, what you stitched, and if you're not a sampler lover, that's okay. You can still be entered in this. Just use the word sampler somewhere in your comment. I will be looking for that word sampler, okay? It's nice visiting with you guys today. I will try to make a floss tube about the uh, quilter station retreat tomorrow, but I'll be packing because I'll be flying out that night, so I'm not sure. But there are a lot of people posting videos about it, so just go take a go take a look. It was fantastic. So thanks for stopping in with me and hanging out this long. Um, I love hearing from you guys. Take care. Bye.